Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three, four. Good evening from Paisley Park. Pleasure to be here on this beautiful Melbourne evening. Joined by Katie Lembovsky. Lembeski. Yes. I'm like awful with names. Yeah. Lembevsky, yeah. yeah. Bevsky? Besky. No, no B, it's an S. Lembeski. Lembeski. You like how it's spelled, yeah. Yeah, Lembeski. Um, this, uh,
Good evening and welcome to Paisley Park in Altona North for the Round 7 fixture where the Altona Magic, they face the ever-red-hot South Melbourne Soccer Club. I'm Adam Palombi. Joining me tonight is Katie Lembeski. A pleasure to be here tonight. Good evening, Adam. Good to be with you for tonight. Perfect conditions, I think, for football here out in the western suburbs. Altona... On back on home soil, looking to build on what was a pretty impressive result on the road to Green Gully last week, um, defeating a, a pretty fancy Green Gully side in a pretty emphatic style, that must be said. And South Melbourne looking to pick up a little bit better off when they, when they were last week, drawing one all in the traditional derby against Heidelberg United. So a lot to play, a lot to play for early on. Um, different ends of the table, different ends of the spectrum, I guess you could say. South looking to maintain that first position. And Altona looking to secure themselves and trying to get themselves out of that relegation zone early days. So looking forward to what's a pretty big game early on in this season. As you can see, the players kick off a little bit delayed this evening. The reserve sides both played before us to a one-all contest. A very compelling one at so. Let's hope the proceedings here tonight can follow on from the Rezies game. Goran Lazanovic. Oh, sorry, no. Goran Lozanzovsky, the manager for the Altona Magic. Of course, was a part of South Melbourne's double in the late 1990s, which was managed by current Tottenham Hospital manager Ange Postacoglu. Wonder how he's going to line up his players tonight against a side who are yet to face the taste of defeat so far this season. Trying to caress play out of the defence were the home side. May have been a hold of the shirt. Meanwhile, first involvement for Javi Lopez, the Spaniard. All the way back to his goal. Nice royal green he's wearing tonight. As Marshall. Heavy touch. Retrieved nicely. In the heart of midfield, Sawyer. Lurking and Katie, what can we expect from the man who's currently leading the goal scorer tally tonight? It's going to be key tonight, it has to be said. South with the aggressive, aggressive move early on, and Max Mikola forcing the turnover, forcing the issue there. He pounced on that one, didn't he? Breaks clear, and that's a massive early blow for the Magic. South on top early. Mikola, ever the opportunist there, Adam. Absolutely spot on, switched on play from him there. Before I could talk about the brilliance of Top goal scorer Harry Sawyer. <laughs> They've pretty much gone bang, stormed in, bundled home from close range, nicely lofted over the captain Christian Rossi's goal. And the home side off to probably what could be considered the worst possible start. South crashing out the gate. And they have a very early lead. Very promising move there, I think, from South Melbourne. I think they're very, very early days, we know, but the fact that they were getting so, so higher up the pitch pressing, getting into the face of the Altona defence, not allowing them a moment to really think or try to play out. And that's the result. That's the result. That's how you make things happen. I know a lot of the criticism that sent around some of their early round performances was around how deep that they were sitting. And they looked to have rectified that today. And when you have the quality of Sawyer and Mikola, why wouldn't you want to play in your half? And that's where the frustration comes from. That frustration very much gone early days here at Paisley Park. Quite the start for the side who currently sit at the top of the table. Of course, are tied with Avondale on 13 points apiece. Currently now, well, the live scores. They were on nine goals for and three against. Now they lead a goal difference of seven, courtesy of that opening goal. that's come within the first, I think, 90 seconds. It's not something unknown for South Melbourne. They do love an early goal. It was only last week in the traditional derby where their captain was on the score sheet within 90 seconds, a real poacher's finish from close range. The big, the big six-foot-five Brisbane-born boy. Of course, he was a recipient of the 2022 NPL Golden Boot. Saltona want to try and find a swift reply. Trying to thread the needle. It was Gouch. Down the wide area come South Melbourne. More central, here's Sawyer. 
Holding up the play nicely, dictating well. Evans shifting gear as Barcia. Can hear the South Melbourne manager Esteban Quintas on the touchline, barking orders early on. As that ball just trickling out of real estate for a throw to be awarded to the home side. Good move there from Altona just to get themselves further up here, not allow South to sort of dictate and just sort of, you know, walk and just walk it out of defence, if you will. But they need to do better. There's a turnover in midfield and half penny. A little bit of afters there, but he has absolute size behind him in midfield. So that's a very tricky customer to mark through the middle. Mikla again looking to make a move here. He's got Delides for company, but he holds his own pretty, pretty well. He needs company, though. Needs his teammates to overlap. He looks for Sawyer in the middle. Lays it off to Bernardo, lurking centrally again. His shot's blocked. A chance for Stoichevsky to clean up at the back as Altona move away now. Barking orders from Quintas to press as Altona try evade it with a long ball. Might have lost it in the sun. And forced backwards. They were the home side. Trying to be progressive in the forward line. Seems like they've gone a flat four across the top with Sedovic leading the line, the number 10. Of course, the Magic haven't had the season they well, want to have had so far. Might take a moment to bring you the lineups here in all the excitement of that early goal. We've forgotten to, to do that, but South pressing again. Rossi forced to clear. Halfpenny looking to clear up through the middle. Mikla just dancing through it. He shoots and just past the left post. A skilled player, an absolute ball if there ever was one. Altona not going to waste time. Not trying to take much breath here. Looking to catch South out of, possess, out of formation, if you will, but not going to get further than Marshall. Yeah, you were right, Adam. In terms of the Altona lineup, it is a, it is a top four. It's almost like a 4-2-4 shape with Jurash, uh, Shahavdic, as well as Rezai and Fabrizio providing just some speed. I think it is quite fluid, if you will. I think you, you might see them rotate through the wings as well, rotate through the middle. you got Stephen Lawless lining up through the middle alongside Saad Mukasha as well. Delides, O'Driscoll, Stoichevsky and Al Hawli as the back four for the Magic. Christian Rossi, of course, the skipper in goal. For South Melbourne, very much a settled, I think a settled known entity, settled known product is so far this year. Harvey Lopez, of course, in goal. Um, Jordan Lampard, Marko Jankovic, Jake Marshall, Morgan Evans in defence. You, you have Barcia and Paos through the middle. And you have, half, of course, Halfpenny strolling through the centre, uh, strong through the centre as well. Mikola, Bernada, and of course the captain, Harry Sawyer, up top. So, um, interesting contrasting style so far. And you mentioned Bernarda. Nahuel had a chance there that was into the path of Christian Rossi, who's currently just sending long balls out to his comrades out there. You can see Altona trying to set onto the game. They've been unraveled early on in the away side, trying to build a swagger about their play now. Unsure the target might have been there from Lampard. So home side happy to rekindle. Christian Rossi. Missed a few rounds of the NPL this season. Only returned in round five to a 4-2 victory. The only one so far this season for the Magic. Away in Green Gully. Final result was a compelling game of football. 4-2 in the end to the team in red and black. They continue to build... Lampard intercepting with ease. Com the commentator's curse, I think, there. So they've sent it long into the wards, the path of Bernarda. Sawyer ahead of him. Bernarda dancing with Jankovic as Lampard. Mikola into the box. Sawyer the target. And Rossi claims referee's whistle sounds. I think that delivery might have just crossed the goal line oh, line along so for a uh, goal kick it will be
You reel off those names there, Adam Lampard, Mikola Bernardo, all featuring in that build up there. That's a lot of power down that flank. And when you have someone like Sawyer as well uh, up the top, that can be very, very hard to, to face down, especially Lampard and Bonata. Um, of course, teammates. Teammates at Green Gully before they make the switch to south in the offseason. Altona, good response here so far. Not overawed by conceding early. No Driscoll and Sawyer. And that's going to be a contest all night. You would have to think it's a big task for O'Driscoll. Good to see him back out on the field, especially following quite quite was what was a scary incident, and um, particularly a couple of weeks ago in that clash with Oakley, that ended up seeing the game called off. Um, fantastic to see him back out there, working hard, and fingers crossed that he's um, you know safe and well out there. Very timely turnaround for the number four. Deep possession now, and the infamous long throw in. Two fourth come. Big long throw in. Swift in towards the box. View surrounds it. Pios. Lampard wants to have a bite and just hoofed away. <laughs> Gabby Lopez momentarily. Seeing a full fly towards his region. And once more, a Spaniard not being tested yet. The home side yet to register anything palpable in their attack. As Lopez wants to move it on. Trying to lock in now the magic, of course. They replayed their round three match against Oakley, which was caught off, as Yaffa mentioned. Katie a few weeks ago, I replayed it on the 11th of March to a 3-1 loss. That game was behind closed doors. So the ball's been whipped over the top. Rezai trying to get round Evans. Nipping at the heel still. The attacker as South look to calmly play it out of danger. It's only back in the hands of the Magic. Stajewski, Sidovic came deep, Jankovic now trying to, correction no it's uh, Jordan O'Driscoll is the number four, bit of confusion surrounding the team sheets this evening we apologise. As Sawyer backtracking for South, remaining composed was McCoucher, Sedovic, Pios up to the task. And now want to try counter attack. Sawyer let it roll. The big boys taking a tumble right in front of the officials' view, and the away side win the foul. Classic target man hold up play there from Sawyer draws the foul in. Good to see South looking qu still quite fluid in terms of the way they, they're attacking at the moment. Bernardo just particularly roaming across the wings, not afraid to cut in centrally either. Mikola, of course, on that left side, causing a bit of havoc early on. Half penny as well, causing some trouble. He's, I think the more advanced of the midfield pairing of Paos and Barcia and half well, the triumvirate, if you have to say. But Bernardo again lurking, Barcia forcing the issue. Now Sawyer. Has O'Driscoll there to cut him off. He does well to block. But he'll recover. He'll go back. Got Paos. He's not going to place away. He looks for options. Ever the professional, the tidy Mario Barcia. South not really not going to bang up their head against the brick wall, so to speak. They're going to look back and look to recycle possession when nothing's presenting. Got the overlap here. Cross comes in. Mikola's clear. The header looping clear. Far, far too much space for him in the for him in the box. Now Tony need to tighten that up. That's a time for them to reset here. 
again they've gone with four up the top so you have to think that, that the best option for them is going to be those transitions those counters and look to play to that front four get them involved in the game just try to give them as much service as you can lawless as well in midfield but you can't risk them getting overrun and that's what i think might be happening here at the moment south repeatedly just sort of overmatching three to two in those midfield stakes but south with the numbers here over the professional with the half penny Brits here looking to make something happen there. He draws a foul. Quite a tricky, speedy, pacey customer as well. You just need to play through strength and get the ball to his feet. He's earned his side the free kick. And they look, they might want to try tee this one up into an area that might test Yavi Lopez. O'Driscoll not being sent up the centre half. But they look to queue on the edge of the area. The most promising chance so far for the home side. Dispatched off the left boot towards an area. Flick on, perhaps from Sedevich. Lawless over the top. Somehow works his way to Fabrizio. Stajewski and heading away to safety. We're south. Through the legs, nicely done. Nifty on the area. Sawyer's come across the captain. Barcia defending for the meantime. The Altona. Magic trying to find a free kick. As Dajewski remains on the ground. Referee thought nothing doing as he remains on the ground. Might have been impaired, Sajewski. Plays continued. Sawyer flicking it out wide. That ball kept alive nicely. But the ref has caught it back and oh, some discomfort from John Stajewski, who has remained on the ground for a while now. Of course, Altona Medics have been caught across. Altona fans gathered to our left. Asking the referee if he uh, has been to spec safe. It's a bit of banter between the two parties. A brief intermission. Of course, it wasn't as hot this time last week as it is tonight. Melbourne, although summer has concluded, still providing some belting weather. And the players, for the meantime, can... Indulge in a beverage, cool down, or some instruction being provided to by Cooper Halfpenny from his management team. Full command, the club in who were deemed the club of the decade in the 1990s, South Melbourne. A lot of pedigree surrounding the club, based out at Lakeside. Had a decent start to their season. Their heaviest victory coming in round four at Petty's Reserve against Manningham United. Where their captain bagged his first hat-trick of the season, took home the match ball. They came out of last week, a goal apiece, taking a point home against long-time rivals Holdenberg United. Turner trying to t change the tide. There might be a man less as Stajewski, Katie, looking worse for wear. Yeah, he knew pretty quickly, didn't he, that he was in a bit of strife. He immediately waved over to the bench or pretty, pretty quickly as well. But good to see him back on his feet. He'll look to rejoin the play, but he'll probably have to do some run-throughs here. Hope, fingers crossed for Altona, that that level of experience that he brings and that know-how that he brings and leadership he brings, that they don't want to lose that. Especially early in this game, just under 20 minutes played so far, falling behind with that early Mikola blow. Uh, yeah, he's gesturing to the referee, he's back. It's fantastic to see. Uh, 
Halfpenny just bringing the ball out through his team. He's not also afraid to jump into the middle as well when, when called for. Again, just that fluidity that South have bought so far, which is good. Allows Lampard to get further up the field like he does here. And he's got Mikola high on the shoulder as well. Two defenders circling. Tony looking to clear up here, but it is quite messy. And they go quick. They go direct. Shahavi showing not to hold up the plate. Allowing teammates to get forward here. There's that man, Stoichevsky. Back on his feet here. He's got Fabrizio there turning. Good build-up play there by Magic. The end product not, not quite there yet. But they do a lot of press here. Rezai now looking to cut in. Takes a shot on it. It's a good effort. Just over the bar, but that's a promising sign for the Magic. Patient build-up play. Didn't just simply blaze away. We're able to just to bring each other forward and get up the field forward together. Not allowing South to dictate defensively there. So it's a good, good early early move here for the home side. Of course, this game at the top of the table being South Melbourne looking to have a little bit more signif uh, significance. Al Avondale 3-0 lost to Manningham United this afternoon. Getting quite a stunning result. In the, an upset if there ever was one. I know a few people had Manningham United in the relegation zone as relegation fodder, but I think that has to be rethought based on that result. I know freak results can happen, but, geez, that's, that's something that makes you stand up and take notice, Adam. Definitely. It was on the gantry last Saturday night at the Hume City Stadium where Avondale were 2-1 winners. Of course, it was their main man converting the penalty from the spot. And Yusuf Ahmed. It's meanwhile, another team in blue looked to build. Whipped towards the back stick. Kept alive. Whipped across. Ball might have gone out of play. Certainly has. Very dangerous cross. Could have nearly been a shot. By Chaos. Who have kept Alterna on us early on. And as for Avondale. They were victorious last week. It's Brilliant the MPL how you can have results, chop and change all the time. A gutsy win from Manningham. Of course, Hume last week in that contest against Avondale had their moments. Just weren't able to convert a lot of chances in the second half, the first half. The heat definitely played a factor. As it's not so palpable tonight, the heat. The players can... Enjoy the breeze coming across to the left. Definitely makes conditions a lot more bearable. It's long ball forward from O'Driscoll. And Altona continue to build. They have a throw in. Again, a good response by the Magic. Shahavid looking to play through to Fabrizio, but not quite palming off there. Lawless battling there with Barcia. South will do well to restart here from the throw-in. Fabrizio looking to play in with the header, but no one quite home to read off that play. Barcia again fighting for every inch, looking to clean up. But to no avail is Rizai here. He needs to come. He takes a shot on himself. No. Harvey Lopez steps up with the save there. Keeper of the year in 2023 and picking up in that same vein of form. Undoubtedly one of the best we have going around here in the NPL men's. Let off a let off for South, uh, for South has to be said. Lopez stepping up. But they sense an opportunity here now. The Magic, they're pressing here. That familiar, that familiar battle, that familiar pairing already of Sawyer and O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll getting the better there will give the chance to restart play. Just a bit more in Altona's terms now, which is a positive side for Lozanovsky's team. 
gets better from the home side, however. Rezai just getting nifty yet in the final third. His effort trying to go through the gates of Yabi Lopez, who had them closed. And the Spaniard providing a fine stop. First real probable chance for the home side. As Lopez is instructing his side to push up. Pressure applied finally as Lopez happy to try to find the big boy Sawyer. Who O'Driscoll slowly becoming equal to the task. Another long ball for, for Lampard to deal with. Some might have been in his eyes. Peos heading nicely to Sawyer. Flick to wide area. Jostling forward was the big boy. As now Barcia. Happy to rekindle. Evans. Shifting, shifting across. Here's Jankovic for South Melbourne. Lampard. Happy to just now command possession. They were trying to jostle beyond Al Halwi. That fullback position today has been strong early on. Tranquillo or Kama was the call from the south bench, I think, early on. They're allowing themselves just to sit behind and not blaze away. They know they're under a bit of pressure there, but now they can just reassess and they get the game back to their pace. If there's a team you don't want to fall one nil behind early on to at South Melbourne, they, they know how to absorb, they know how to get themselves they know how to get themselves home after defending the lead here, but that long throw in doesn't quite pay off for them here as Rizai looks to make something happen. He needs numbers. He's got options there in terms of Al-Hali through the middle. Overlapping there, but they'll win the throw in here. Afterburners on display early on from Rizai trying to evade his marker. As standing strong there was Marshall. For South, trying to progress forward was Delides. Trying to switch the play, and finding the head of Archibald. It's good to see Stajewski back on his feet. He found Lawless working on the area. It's going to be ushered out of play for another South Melbourne goal kick. Marshall ushering. Lopez wants to get things moving once more and a few talking points for South Melbourne. Of course their current manager Esteban Quintas. The Argentine moved to Melbourne in 2016 where he coached their under 16 side before finally being appointed the, the realm of well, main manager in 2019 for the seniors. Since then had some level of success with South Melbourne, of course. In 2022, they were premiers of the NPL. They were, would go on to lose the final of the championship to rivals Oakley. As an elusive pass from Pios. And Rossi was equal to the task. Altona also having their share of magic. In terms of honours, the Victorian Premier League champions on five occasions, of course in the late 90s and late 2000s, as Lawless couldn't keep it, and South now back in possession. And uh, as you mentioned, Adam, two famous clubs, both in tra rich in tradition and history here. Not quite coming off for Altona up top though so far. Not for lack of effort, not for lack of trying, but just that I think they just find themselves slightly overmatched. I think that the quality not quite there. The undoubted quality of South shining through at certain moments of this game. Particularly Payos for me has been one of the one of the, the better players. Like very very proactive, always looking forward, always looking forward to be that link between the midfield and the defence which is somewhere that South 
according to like to some to some criticism and quite warranted in, in some cases where they bypass midfield a lot of the time. And I think Payos is a, is a difference maker. I think in terms of this season, so making a step up, not allowing Stoichevsky to move at all there in the press, but it works out okay. Rezai, of course, scoring that double last week against Green Gully that powered them to the win. Quite good at just patiently building up here. Alternative, good ball in for Joash. Glancing across. Couldn't quite get the header on target, but that's a lovely ball in and another positive sign for the home side, Adam. And Lopez caught in three minds, a goalkeeper. Fabrizio also in a fine position. And the home side slowly building. Certainly ramping up the pressure. A lot finer in their transitional play. Lawless was composed in that passage, which allowed the play to culminate. And nearly at the back post was Daniel Fabrizio to draw this one level. And called upon early on Lopez. It's a fine stop to deny Rezai. As he dispatches it towards Sawyer. He's going to try to find the big boy. It's picked off nicely. Now Tana remaining composed in the middle of the park. Sawyer on defensive duties. I think the initial goal they conceded. Major lapse in judgment. Might have remained in the dressing room. You could say because it's been a wake up call for them. As Lawless. Fine interception from Archibald. No, sorry, from Pios rather. Controlled nicely by South. As Pales this time, went over the top to Sawyer. The flag stays down. He assesses what's ahead of him. Confronted by O'Driscoll. Sawyer patient. Happy to go backwards. And South just remaining so composed in possession. As Pios, very composed. Trying to shift it now out wide to Lampard. Jankovic. Crossing towards the back post. Sawyer might be there. It's headed across the face of goal. And nearly collecting the prize was Max McCola. Brilliant move from South. Nearly two to the good. Yeah, lovely build up there. And Sawyer just with that glancing knockdown header. Classic target, big man play. Not quite there for Mikula to knock down. South lurking here and it's Payos on the ball. Looping cross. He's got Sawyer at the back post. It's blocked away. Dalidi's brilliant there to block it away. And that's a let off of the magic, but South pressing here. They sense blood in the water. They're getting up the field and they're getting right into the home team's face. And I'll get the corner to show for it too. Sawyer, hands in on his head. He was certain he'd scored. Brilliant defensive effort from the magic to prevent that from rippling the back of Christian Rossi's net. Right as the train passes in the back, you can see South gearing up for a corner. Magic shirts surrounding Sawyer. Had an impressive six foot five, the number nine. Looks to be the target, whipped in towards that region. Sawyer jostling, Rossi coming and clawing away. Pios wanting to rekindle, skipping beyond his marker. Crossed back in towards a region, headed across goal. Another corner awarded. It was a marshal with the header. And they're just dialing it up even more now south. Marshall there with the header. Lurking there. Again, just they, they utilize these set pieces and they wear teams down to South Melbourne. And this is exactly what, me, what might be happening here. We'll see if South can get the goal to show for it. But they're just turning the screws. Mikla again to stand over this one. Just waiting on the ball there. A little bit of funny buggers there. Waiting on the ball. Christian Rossi rolling that back. And got the routine coming in. 
Not quite pulling off the south there, but they look to clean up. Payos at the back. Looping with his deflected across. Bernardo at the top of the box. He shoots. Blocked away by Lawless, throwing himself into that. Jankovic being the focal point, but can't quite get a clear header down. A bit of pinball here. Mikola looking to breach the Altona lines there, but Rossi racing off the line. Now they'll look to relieve some pressure here, Adam. Yeah, Sawyer let it roll beyond him. And it nearly caught the Altona defence off guard. But alert was Rossi and read the play nicely, the goalkeeper. The wind has picked up around here. Altona, of course, is notorious for as windy conditions. It is pushing across to the left. You can just see the ball each time it is airborne. It tends to sit up that little bit longer. It tends to be pushed across. Towards the South Melbourne goal. Of course, when you do have the wind in football, it's always a positive. And Altona currently have it, but they're not playing. But with that momentum, it could provide. As I have conceded another foul. And it busy, the official early on. And South Melbourne look to kick into the face of the wind and try to tee something up once more. And look to go long here with this one again, South. Looking, I'm not quite sure what the aim was for there, but doesn't quite come off nevertheless. Altona will get the chance to clear up. Again, just some of the... Again, with just with the breeze, I think it's favouring, to be honest, it's more of a swell. I think it's favouring more the Altona side, to be honest, because South haven't quite been able to quite nail down their set pieces. I think the wind is just sort of wreaking a little bit of havoc so far. Be interesting to see how they can go up the other end as Jankovic loops the ball long across for Peos. Stoichevsky to face him there. It's looping. Rossi quite comfortable, though. Looking to launch a counter, Joash, who hasn't quite been involved. Oh boy, and he'll want that moment back again. They just need to, they, they need to get him involved. He has the goal scoring capability, he scored last week. Just need to play to the strengths here, Altona, and they need to maybe move the ball a little bit quicker to, to, to disrupt that south defensive shape. Make a little clean up as south go again. A rare misstep from Jouaus. Currently Altona's top goal scorer this season on three goals. He has featured in every contest so far. It's a nice ball to pick out. South Melbourne trying to get in beyond. It's a fine save from Rossi. Bernardo was getting in behind. And Rossi had to be alert. Quintas still barking at his henchmen out there for South Melbourne. Rossi towards the region of Juash. As Altona continued to build, you can see Lawless working further up the pitch, as is Stajewski. Lawless now in possession, touch was a bit heavy. Juash, runner on the outside, plays him now. They queue up in the middle for Altona. It's whipped in towards Fabrizio. A bit too high. The initial cross. And remaining unbothered. And playing fetch is Javi Lopez. Game plan so far. Katie working a dream for Esteban Quintas and his men. It is. It is. And particularly just that defensive that defensive shape of theirs. They're just so, so solid. Marshall. Um, Lampard, especially to this evening, and Morgan Evans as well, is quite slotted in to that void, I think, left by Brad Norton with his um, top-level retirement in the off-season, so ne very much a next-man-up mentality here as Payos looks to create something once again. Sawyer linking up with Mikola. He'll go from the top of the box, he'll shoot and it's off the bar! Deary, deary me. Fortune on the side of the magic there. Mikola darts that ball low. 
Rossi matches, goes down to it. And then ricochets off the bar and back in. That had to be close. Christian Rossi counting his lucky stars at the moment. It looked to be an initial fine save. Just bounced very unorthodoxly up onto his crossbar. As the away fans hold their breath. Bounced on the line, but not over it. And the scores still remain the same. A warning sign for the home side, however, and they look to go quickly. Sajewski to Lawless. I'm going to try and make something work for Brizio lurking. Sajewski, South defending very strongly. It's going to take some undoing. Trying to work the gears. Lewis Rezai, he's bundled off it. As South, so calm in possession. Happy to rekindle. And he feels if each time, Katie, South are to dispossess the home side, he can just feel like a air of confidence bleed out of them. Bleed out of them. Uh, what can they do to try build on that? Meanwhile, big, big turnover in play. It will open up for the home side. So Dahovic trying to cross, gets a second bite at it. As it's slowed momentarily, Sedovic into the path of Al Halwi, crossing towards the back stick. And it'll central that region. Joush the target. But Lopez climbed high. Reclaimed possession. And just as I was asking you the question, Katie, Altona seemed to go find the answer. But what can they build on in the second term? Concentration to me, honestly, Con staying in the game is going to be is going to be key to them. There's going to be opportunities that come their way, maybe not many, but it's going to come, and they they need to be ready to take that as it comes. They have, I think, they're quite they're quite stout, they're quite resilient. There's a good men I think there's a good mentality within this team, but they need to stay focused and stay in the fight for as long as they can. Joash much better now. He's taking on Lampard. Looks for a teammate in Laws at the top of the box, but can't quite get it. Find him there. Mukasha there looking to battle with Mikkel and he gives away the foul. To be honest, it might be a little bit harsh on him. I thought he was quite strong in the challenge there, the stronger of the two, but Mikkel are brave again in presenting for the ball in a real dangerous area to, to give the ball away, but he holds his ground. And, you know, I feel like when you work hard, I think you get the fortune that comes your way in the end. So... A let off the south, if you will. Nakasha conceding the foul, of course. He was the man who thumped home and ensured Altona's victory against Green Gully. A fine finish off his right boot, in, right into the top right corner. On the left side of the goal from some distance. It was a brilliant finish as Sawyer has been flagged for offside. As we approach the end of the first term, unsure on how much stoppage time we might be entitled to. An early goal, the difference. And the away side looking comfortable. You wonder what Goran Lozanovsky will implement at the halftime interval. Of course, he is a former Socceroo, the Altona Magic manager. As Lawless, right in front of Ugo Raslan, the fourth official today. Had a bit to do last week, the fourth official at Hume City Stadium. Got a bench to contain, a lot more cordial tonight. As O'Driscoll initially intercepted a fine pass over the top, chance might open up. Bonada! How close can you get? It was brilliant from Bernarda. Bit of trickery on the left side of goal. Got it onto his right boot. Hit it off the volley. And that would have been something very special. Yeah, unreal. Unreal play from Bernarda there. All that was missing was the goal. Manufacturing that, just pulling out the volley there. Ah, oh, volley there, just a great touch. He got himself clear, took it past it, over past it, over defender, it should be said. And just past the right post there with the shot that's the type of skill that he has that is that sort of x-factor that he has you don't teach that I think that's something that you're 
that you can just sim- that you just simply born with. I think he has that skill, he has that quality there. But South again just looking back and hold and just reassessing and just dominating possession like they so often have so often have this half. Half penny on the turn. As cautious as you like here, South. Sawyer again presenting. Payos as he so often has overlapping. The build continues. The switch of play continues in Jankovic. In a sort of libero role, r- racing into midfield. Mikula with that flick to the direction of Bernarda. Looks to run around his defending and will get a foul. As a result, you get the free, I think, as a result. Just getting himself into those positions, just maneuvering his body, maneuvering himself into space and finding, allowing Mikula to play that flick on pass to him. A little bit worse for wear, but he'll be back on his feet. And a south set piece to follow. And the Argentine has spent a bit of time away from his mother country. As the officials have indicated, an additional minute of stoppage time to follow. Banana earning the free kick. He's at the near post. It's whipped in towards the back. Header at the back post. Second bite. Sawyer lurking and the poacher guiding it over the top of Christian Rossi's goal. Couple of chances now for Sawyer. He has not been able to convert the captain. You feel like his moment will come, though, however, at some stage in this contest. There's a bit of work to do for the home side in the second term. Esteban Quintas will look to keep proceedings as following. South being very strong as the halftime whistle has been indicated. And the away side go into the halftime interval with a 1 0 lead. Don't move anywhere back shortly for the second half of this round seven clash.
back underway for the second half. Well, South Melbourne have been in pure command of the home side, trying to marry into it. Over the team in blue, spearheaded by their colossal captain, Sawyer. Flirting early on in the edge of the area, South Melbourne. A lively start. Trying to find a penalty they were. Kept alive. It was a fast start to the first half. They were very quick to score to break the deadlock. They do something of the same sort the second, Katie. Well, yeah, need to find a... Getting his head right into that and clearing it away. Now the work rate comes in. It's Rizai now on the break. bench no, not a lot there maybe like a Nathan Liberto or Nedim Skenderovic on the bench Matthias Gonzalez of course a defender Alex Gust and Julian Rodriguez making up the bench alongside the reserve keeper in Hayden Brown no, the depth is not quite there though, I have to say Adam unfortunately for the home side but the team has to be greater than the sum of its parts here they need to they need to fight together here You could say the follow home side tonight has been from their number 26. Rizai always looking to probe. There's meanwhile a chance opening up for South Melbourne. Bernardo across the face of goal, and there it is. Their old Bernardo finally dispatched off his left boot, hits the bottom right corner of Christian Rossi's goal, and South Melbourne two to the good. Noel Bernardo once again delivering at a crucial time a massive blow struck by South Melbourne early on in this second half making no mistake on the turnover there making no mistake on pouncing getting themselves up the field and Bernardo getting into space there getting through on goal and making no mistake with the shot accurate as you like to the bottom right the quality showing there from the Argentinian and he loves that linking up with Andy Brennan there just on the side Big, big moment in this game, Adam. This team seemed to love a fast start. That's two weeks running now where they've had goals in the first couple of minutes of three halves now. It's last week at Lakeside against Heidelberg. Kings of the quick start. As Altona cannot marry into any form of possession. A couple of shirts through a Kindle for them. Oh, tackle might have looked late. Hitting the deck was... Al Hawali, who's been slow to get up. Altona now chasing a two goal deficit. They have to make things work. Here's a man that can do so. Razi went out wide. He's continued the run central. Sedevic. Makaucha. Sejanovic. Stachevsky rather was crossing to no effect, trying to win the ball back. Was the number six? Pios amongst it. Sawyer jostling, though Driscoll. So they look to go forward, a bit too much for Bernarda. South Melbourne concede the ball. I'll turn a throw in. And just that. that. Stay concentrated, stay in focus, stay in focus. Come on, my 
Nice find over the top ball. A chance over it up now for the Magic. Rezai turning onto the left boot, trying to shuffle it onto his right. He's greeted by a couple. And Marshall ushering at the very depths of Yabby Lopez's box. The dancing shoes from Joey Durazi were certainly on there. There's a long ball forward from Yankovic into the path of Al Hawali. He wins a throw, wants to get things moving quickly. It was Delides. side having at half chance Esteban Quintas very happy man now we side two to the good the magic have to find some he feels soon if they are going to mount a comeback of course South Melbourne only conceding three goals so far this season it's going to require something very special to unravel their back line Morgan Evans there oh my word what a great challenge solid as you like Sturdy. I know that's a big, big void to fill. We alluded to it, Brad Norton, uh, with a top level, a top flight retirement from South Melbourne and going across Eston Rawls in the off season. That's a, a lot of experience to miss and a lot of quality to miss. But Evans takes it as uh, slotted in superbly. Then you see that within that tackle, accurate on point. Payos again looking to find Sawyer as he so often has. He'll win the foul. O'Driscoll, of course, a the offending player there just looking to the benches not so much movement you have to say so both coaches still have their options in reserve I know we alluded to the Altona subs but for South Ross Archibald of course quality player an outstanding player at this level especially Andy Brennan no stranger to this level no no stranger to quality that he brings either rounding out the subs is of course the Backup keeper in Willem Lejeune and of course under 20s, under 23s prospects, excuse me, in Mihailo Marinkovic, Zach Spiteri, and Bolt Tom. So options as well for Esteban Quintas, but he's quite content in what he has at the moment. Mikla standing over this one. Barcia too. Decent effort there too, and Rossi forced into a fingertip save, and of course that will generate a corner too. It's just that wind picking up again, favouring to the left of screen to south end right now, and they're looking to make every bit of that work for them here. A chance to turn the screws once again. A decent distance to free kick. Able to generate some loft on the ball and have it dip over. Christian Rossi's a Get it back and forth on the edge of the penalty area. Yellow card issue to the captain. Following the little tussle between the South captain and Mikasha. Sawyer enters the book. The official right place to issue the foul the, the first slice of cheese I think tonight shown this evening and Harry Sawyer just having still a bit of afters here with the referee but on, let's try to get on with it here just try to stay focused I think it has to be the message for him Payos so patiently waiting and ye another yellow will be shown for Joad Rizai too maybe just for some afters in that with the referee Platter coming out. Two other cards issued. Corner kick to be taken. Finally whipped in towards the back post. It sits up. They look towards the official. A handball might have been issued. Esteban Quintas with his hands raised. Fair bit to say. Oh, the back pass has gone straight. A chance to open up. Gabby Lopez remains tall. Came sprinting off his line like a cat. All unfolding very quickly. Esteban Quintas. Up in arms, 
Ulgar Arslan hearing the most of it. A handball claim shouted by the Argentine. Still having a fair bit to say towards the official. It's nearly opened up for his right the other end. Oh, and just overshooting the pass was Senovic into the pass of Gauch. And Esteban Quintas, he's enraged. Cadiz has a lot to say. It's unbelievable, man. Unsure if you've heard that on the audio. It's yes, unbelievable, yes. man. Across the Argentine. He believes his side should have a spot kick. Katie, what do we make of that? All happening. All happening. Like I say, there's so much in the NPL, men's and women's. It's a very intimate setting, these things, and you hear every little thing, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the not so good, but it's all part of the colour and the fun, and it keeps us making his feelings very much known there. <laughs> and it's unbelievable, is still the cry. He just needs to stay focused here for his own, for his side. As South look, no, Altona, excuse me, look to the bench here. It's going to be Julian Rodriguez replacing... Daniel Fabrizio and Nathan Liberto making his round to the field for Nusha Havdic. So, a bit of fresh legs, a bit of in, a bit of fresh attacking impetus just after the best beneath the 60th minute. And Kintas will do well to listen to Hagim Sheriffowski and Nawa Banada here. Risk a possible sending off here. And the referee taking notes here. He might well, of course, the yellow and red card effects are in for coaches as well. And best behaviour, you'd have to say, for Esteban Quintas from here on. He was incensed there, the Argentine. Kept alive by fellow countryman Bernardo. the effective boss's intervention. We discuss what unfolded there. It was Jankovic's header at the back post, which all the South Melbourne boys were convinced might have collided with a hand. Jury, however, nothing doing. Stern warning was issued to Quintas. A lot to say about it. As the wind intervening for the magic, trying to get out of the defence, and oh, that's brilliantly done. Very composed and spinning away from danger they were. It's not holy. It's done by McCoucher under pressure. Very composed. He's sad. As O'Driscoll. One ball off the chest, brilliantly. By the substitute. First touch of the contest. El Holloway able to keep alive. Mr. Bass just still having a chat. Not sure who's listening on the touchline to him. Not to say the Argentine as a side hard to throw it. Very much a passionate, uh, very much a passionate coach indeed is Esteban Quintas. Liberto trying to make something happen for the magic through midfield. I think there's a realization there from the Artona coaching staff, Goran Lozanovsky especially, that they're being a little bit overrun in midfield, so Liberto adding almost like a third man in midfield so far. We'll keep an eye on how that goes, but Joash looking to get involved there. As is Reside, just near enough, not quite good enough for Altona so far. Well read there from El Haoli. Not settled at all here at the moment, just end to end ping pong sort of stuff. The game needs to settle into some sort of rhythm. I guess that favors Altona, and in particular, if, if it's a bit more health to scale, if that pace is a little bit picked up, it doesn't last out to dictate terms too much, but they need to get it in their half. One thing the home side do share in common with the team unbeaten are the goals for so far in the competition. Prior to the contest so far, both sides were on nine goals for a piece, of course, Altona. Having, has an impressive defensive record, having conceded 12, a goal difference of negative three. As Sawyer trying a party trick, try to find Banana, who's competed strongly to keep that alive. Go towards the Altona corner flag. Three game, it wasn't mentioned. Magic don't mind hitting the back of the net. Then Valiant's in their defeats. Just a couple of two, three losses, both home and away. 
to both Dandenong based sides in Dandy City and Dandy Thunder. They had conceded twice in their eventual 4 2 victory at Green Gully. Only kept goalless one time so far this season. It was their initial round one fixture against Heidelberg. So definitely a talking point. You could ex almost expect a goal from them. And the free flowing football, as I mentioned, could lead to that happening. Three goals, of course, scored by Bill Jarash. So there's, I think there's some attacking firepower there. I think there, I think there really is. But it's also been a tricky start to the season. If you look at some of the, the teams they've come up against in terms of Hartleburg, uh, Dandy City, Oakley, that's a tough, tough opening. As well as the quality, the undoubted quality of Green Gully, um, Dandy Thunder as well. Of course, who particularly have such an X factor about them, right? So. It's a tricky start to the season, but I don't think there's any easy games in the NPR Victoria this season, um, especially. So um, it's tough. It's tough. They need to. What they need to probably look to the market, and they need to probably look for someone in midfield who's going to be a ball player, someone who can link it all together for them and allow Stephen Laws to have a bigger say on games as well. South go again here with the cross. So no avail though. They're going to look to set up and again get the game back on their pace, back to their tempo. Those who are doing well to disrupt there. He tangles with Barcia there, does Liberto. But can't allow Sawyer to dictate here. Three seconds of differentiation is quite telling. He looks to win a corner here, there's a tangle. Is still in play. It's a no avail, Harry Sawyer, and I'll turn it all reset here. But yeah, it's a it's a tough tough situation that they're in. When you, when you have that level of squad turnover, it's very hard to start again and expect to have a similar outcome. It was a final team last year, and you know the likes of Cuba, Leach, Semi, um, that, that that level of quality to see that to see that go. That's a setback for Altana, but they can't dwell on that too much. Tarak who's here now, Joash lurking here. He get, he try to get on the end of it, and he does with a bit of fortune. He buries it to the left-hand side. Pulls Joash, pulls on back for Altona. 2-1 here at Paisley Park. And South are, absent, are apoplectic at that. They're hoping to have a free kick paid in the build-up there, but the referee is not having it. 2-1, 2-1, Altona pulled back. And the home fans leading the Macedonia chance. It's about to mention how the wind has, is becoming a factor. The breeze definitely turning into a wind. And Juash just propped up perfectly for him. Ran very composed to place it beyond the force field of which is Yavi Lopez's goal. The South order reply quickly, Banana. Coming deep, Lampard providing an option there. Resort to that corner flag again to no avail. And I did, I was saying before, Katie had the home side. Better look for a goal, and Sawyer's is dispossessed in a promising area. It's going to line up for Pios, and a penalty will be awarded this time. It does strike the hand of the inclusion of Driscoll. South Melbourne with a swift response. There's no denying that an obstruction was made with the hand. Oh. Odris, Aaron O'Driscoll again, the offending defender. Say that, say that uh, quickly, I'll give you 50 bucks, but it'll be a penalty, it just goes up the other end. Again, we're just about to, we're just about to mention Altona, just persistence paying off for them. You know, Juash just continuing to stay in that contest and ended up getting on the end of it, ended up making no mistake with the chance. Fourth goal of the year, but such is life out of South Melbourne, just particularly picking up, getting back, getting themselves forward here, and a chance to restore their two-goal lead will be Sawyer to take. And Sawyer had a penalty in round two against Moreland at CB Smith Reserve, which was almost the final kick of the game, which the keeper had guessed the right way, into the bottom left, keeper's unlucky, he's not going to touch on it, but the captain to make it seven goals for the season, to give them another two-goal buffer. Sorry against Rossi, goes to his right, 
Harry Sawyer never in doubt. Although he was penalised with the yellow card, he's on the scoreboard. And it's 3-1 to South Melbourne. They reinstate their two-goal buffer. He's been presenting and presenting all night, has Harrison Sawyer. He's led the line really well, as he so often does. The captain brings on that extra responsibility, and he makes no mistake from the spot either. Such a quality player. Has to be the best in the league at what he does. And Esteban Quintas has looked toward his bench now to be Ross Archibald and Andy Brennan coming on to replace Cooper Halfpenny as well. Just confirm that second change will be Emil Chaos as well making way for Andy Brennan. Now this is exactly prime South territory now. They will have the ability to absorb and they'll get the game and they'll be able to, look to settle back on their lead like a boxer working behind their jab and just keeping Altona at bay, keeping them at distance. Not a team you want to fall behind for at any, at any time, of any, at any point in the game. Back on South, in, back in South hands at the moment, Adam. Yep, kick off, just already considered possession, the home side who haven't lacked quality. So speaking of quality, what a brilliant pass. And the substitute, Brennan, with his first touch. Whipped in towards Sawyer, well defended, headed back in towards an area. It remains alive for South, whipped across the face, and Rossi, the captain, contributing and palming to safety. It's a brilliant ball, I'm going to say, from Lampard over the top to reach Brennan. Of course, Andy Brennan was his first inclusion of the evening. Here we teed up a second for Sawyer. Feel like the home side won't lie down, they will look to be proactive in attack, which might leave them exposed in defence. Another corner to deal with. It's Nicola, it's whipped in, Sawyer the target off his shoulder. Rossi, like a quarterback, wants to get the ball moving, runs the full length of his box. Another substitute trying to get round the tight legs of Lampard. He's just held Bernada to the ground. A couple of afters there. Bernada looks like he was. Strikes to the face, play resumes, goal scorer, into the path, trying to make it work, now they are, the Irishman, trying to find an opening, the Jouache, Sajewski's cross, as far as Marshall who heads away, and now Goran Lozanovsky having a chat to the fourth official, Ugo Aslan. Definitely having a conversation down there. As trying to turn now around Tona. To win a corner, they have spinning initially. They were with Saad Makasha. This contest slowly starting to get a bit more spicy by the, by the minute. Absolutely. This game picked up in pace toward at the start of the second half. We came in, came in hot. Both teams came back out of that room, hot and ready to go. So I tell you, need to find something here at the set piece. Big opportunity there for O'Driscoll. Of course, he was the culprit at one end, conceded the penalty. Had a chance there off his head. As Lopez had the long option, like to play it short as Sawyer indicates he wants to go for a stroll. It's in towards his region. Only a couple to beat for Sawyer. The reinforcements coming. Brennan there to provide that option. There he is, the substitute. As Sawyer looks back towards. The near post, Brennan's cross, bounced before reaching Rossi, who once again wants to try spur on his side. End to end football. And for the meantime, patient approach slowly going out the window as Altona. Well, they, for a moment, they brought it back to only a one goal deficit, quickly cancelled out by the penalty at the other end for South Melbourne. Of course, not that quality. This Altona Magic side. Uh, maybe they perhaps lack a bit of chemistry and cohesion given the busy transfer window they had in January. Naturally it was gonna take time, but I think just the level of uh, the level of signs that they have is not quite up to the level of the ones they have lost, unfortunately. Um, again, it was a final squad last season. And they can't I know they can't look back on that, but that's a big, big step back to take and we're at a time where 
relegation is now very real possibility, which is which is unfortunate. I think it's not for lack of trying, it's not for lack of effort, but the fact is, I think there's a bit of, I think there is a quality issue. Unfortunately, I think there's also that cohesion needs to come a little bit more. I've seen some positive, we've seen some very positive signs. It's, you know, it hasn't been all bad at all tonight. They're playing against probably the best, the best team in the league outside of Avondale, uh, essentially. So can't be too down on They need to step up. They need to find a way to step up. Southall to build, that might have hit a hand. And look towards the official once more. Stajewski might have been the culprit. He was in an unnatural position. Joush is still trying to make things work. Long ball going to sit up in the wind and just sail beyond. Oh, yeah, trying to play up. was impeded. Kausha, free kick earned as substitutes have been issued for the home side. Resort to their bench once more, making way. That'll be Alex Gust coming on, replacing, of course, the number six this evening in Johnny Stoichevsky and Matthias Gonzalez as well, replacing Mohamed Al Hawli as to complete the fourth change for Altona so far this evening. And uh, Matas Gonzalez, of course, one of the players who stayed, uh, who come who has re-signed for the 2024 season, but it's a knockdown pass. Taking on the shot a first time, of course, is Andy Brennan. And why wouldn't you with the wind at your back? That's where South are playing to the conditions a lot better. They've known that the wind is with them in this half and they're making full use of that. I think that they've looked to go on forward quicker. I know that they'll be more disciplined, but they're cautious, even if you will. A little bit, um, a little, not so much going to be quick with the ball moving against the breeze, but now they've adapted. They've adapted. Now they're making our turn to pay. And that one just ending up on the golf course behind Christian Rossi's goal. Three quick to issue the foul. Bernardo conceded. He's a help up. McCausha. So the ball over the top set up nicely. He's taken first time. To no effect. Sawyer with a brilliant flick on. I like this contest, although that looked bleak for Altona. You never know in the NPL. An upset today in Avondale. Going down against Manningham. Just don't know what to expect. The South find Lampard in the wide area. Just bundled off it. Just pull the shirt. Going for a kick, Altona. Get a moving quick look. He's fallen upon his own feet, unfortunately. It was the substitute. The belt off. Not the uh, first. That impact he would have wanted to have on this contest. So ball forward, the substitutes trying to provide some fresh legs as Jankovic defending strong as he has all night. So it's time to continue to build. Ross Archibald as well, his introduction just a few minutes ago, he's slotting in front of that defence, he's adding that extra screen in front of the back four. He's, of course, he's no stranger, an ex-Altona player in his own right. Altona making an, an opportunity here. Shatter a handball off Marko Jankovic there off the cross. The cross, of course, in by Julian Rodriguez, the second half sub, but not having any of it was our referee. Looped o nearly looped over Yabby Lopez. He had to be certain as Sawyer, nearly playing the incisive pass into Brennan. Few jeers for handball this evening. He's oof, made to work for it there. He's done well to keep it alive. It's a bit of a heavy pass. From Imperto. Not a heavy pass to follow. Have to chase back was Delides. Goes back to Rossi. South pressing high. Trying to lock it in. Brennan applying pressure on O'Driscoll. And Sawyer also confronting. So we're trying to flick on. Now, just pops it up, taking a tumble, and finally dispatching this one. Going to reach the clubhouse almost. Well and truly over by Mario Barcia. South are playing firm pressure, forcing the issue. 
Force it all the way back to the goal of Altona. Which means we've got another goal kick to follow. Like we've mentioned, it's exactly where they want this game to be. in the, Within their grasp, within their lead. Then, and again with the win behind their backs too. So it's a tough, tough task for Altona. It's an uphill climb, that's for sure. This has been inside the south half for, near, for over at least 60% of the time in this. Altona going to go along here though, through Christian Rossi. See that win just pull the ball back off the goal kick. Nicola looking to combine, looking to find Bernada. That's well stood up, well read. Of course, Matthias Gonzalez. Always danger lurking when Bernardo is lurking. I've said this before, but in terms of the way he plays the game, there's a lot of Carlos Tevez to, his, to the way he approaches, the way he presses, the way he runs and puts a very direct bullet-like approach that he puts off and brings. Nicola to take the throw. Long as it comes, so Jessica doing well again. The knockdown is sort no, Archibald there getting on the end of that, excuse me. Couldn't get the shot down. And that's another let off. But South continuing to turn the screws and absorb. And just, and I'll kind of continue to absorb this pressure, but I wonder for how long, how much longer, Adam? That throw in ability from Max Nicola is nearly as dangerous as a set piece. You can see the throw in deep in a South Melbourne attacking area. You best believe you're going to have alarm bells ringing, ringing in defence. Anytime Max McCullough picks up the ball with his two hands to throw it, generates such power and velocity. Always poses a problem. Is a massive thorn in the side of any opposition. Trying to play South Melbourne. In their arsenal. There's 39 minutes remaining in this contest. I'll turn it up. It would be all systems go if they have to mount something. It's right on top of it. So move it out wide, fine move. Umberto teasing Jankovic, who's conceded the corner. It's more promising from the magic. To pull something out of the hat here. They've had to they've had to work extra hard against this breeze. And it's gonna be a set piece. Can they find something? O'Driscoll coming down, he's been quite brave at defending the set pieces. If they can find him here, could be a difference. It's low, but to no avail at all. You need to get something much higher on the ball and beat the first man at the very least. Well done here. Yeah. Pressure from South looking to generate the press going back the other way. Rodriguez now, the second half sub, too heavy a touch with the presence of Jankovic lurking. And it will be a south goal kick through Lopez. Rodriguez just not judging that first touch the way he would have liked to. It's a fine move from the opposite side of the field to allow the switch to happen. Of course, those supporting Altona definitely had a couple of cheers for the composure on display. As the wind is definitely becoming a factor now when the gantry was warm before. Caddy and I in the commentary position, definitely feeling the effects of that win. I'm sure the players level to it on ground level. It's just, you can also see maybe the corner flags on your screens. It's blowing in that left direction. As Nicola looks to keep his arms warm. Have a big throw in as the South Boys tend to enter the box. Sawyer calling for it. Wants it within his vicinity. Nicole with the run up, dispatched impressively towards Sawyer who gets up high, it remains along the line, it's hit the crossbar, will it be bundled at home by close range, you best believe it will. Another goal and it's Ross Archibald off the bench and on the scoreboard he goes. As Affa mentioned, that throw in from McCullough, such a thorn in the side of any opposition as South Melbourne look to increase their goals for and goal difference. This time it's Archibald off the bench with a goal. Classic South ball, classic Esteban Quintas ball there. This, those set pieces proving to be an absolute nightmare for opposition defences. Simple yet oh so effective and South make a count every time. 
Archibald this time getting on the end of it. So often it can be Sawyer, so often it can be uh, Marshall, Jankovic, all of all of those players hit the scoreboard. But now making it effect making a big, big impact once again. South is party time. And the mind just shifts each time Nicola is in possession from a th throw in to uh, Premier League legend Eric Peters, of course representing Stoke City in the likes of West Bromwich Albion, where he currently plays a 35 year old. But he also possessed that long throw in, which always seems to work across any level of football. This is South, it is party time as you mentioned. I'll turn up. Like they're staring down the barrel of another heavy defeat. Uh, it takes a quite miraculous home side to mount a comeback. I thought this contest is nearly wrapped up. They can get it done on a windy night at Altona, can South. Again, that classic Rory Delap move, as we so often see that Rory Delap long throw in. Yeah, it, it's, it's baffling at this point how teams can't quite get a grip on it and just how good South have perfected it. And you can see just some of the routines that the set pieces, like lining up in a straight like in a straight line behind each other and just bursting off. There's so many ways for them to hurt you. And it's so well-rounded. Done well there, I'll turn it to withstand the pressure. It's still chasing relentlessly. We're South. That pass not working to full effect for the home side, but still pressing. 80 minutes played so far in this contest. You have to give it up for their game management too. The way that they've, the way that they've managed time, the way that they've managed conditions, and the way that they've known what to expect. The way that that's so often a big battle in PL grounds when conditions have a bit more of a factor than you do in like a normal stadium setting. But they they know how to play to the environment that they're in and look to go forward again through Brennan. Again, a second half sub gets low. O'Driscoll doing well there to cut off Sawyer, but they'll. Be a goal kick. They wanted the corner. Our referee's not having any of it though. The South Melbourne in the meantime will look to their bench. It'll be Bowl at Tong ready to come on here. Will a change happen now? I think it may well do. Sawyer relenting the armband to Marco Jankovic. That might be all she wrote tonight for the captain. Had a fine performance. Scoring from the spot. Playing the poacher's role to full effect. Capital obligation has been awarded to Jankovic for the remainder of this competition. You can hear the away South fans with high appraisal for their golden boy as he resides to the bench. Still some time for Altona to find a consolation goal or for South to pile on the punishment. You saw so often see teams have that early season slip. You know, we saw, of course, a big, big news around Avondale and they lost to Manningham this afternoon. There's not a lot of margin for error, I think, at the top of the table. So, for, like, in this season, like, given the pace that Avondale set last year and the pace that South is not threatening to set this year, there's no margin for error. And for South to come out here, you know, even in the first minute, coming on and just and the kick, of course, opening the scoring with that turnover, with that coach's move, it's 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 a testament to what they built. It's a testament to their confidence, to their focus, and there's some absolute professionals in this team. And you're seeing why they bring results like this here tonight. This is engraved in the culture of South Melbourne. A very decorated club within their own right. Of course, of most of some of Australia's finest footballing brains, the most renowned footballing brain across the globe, the edge across the continent, from Australia, of course, he was a South Melbourne boy. He was involved in a double they were winners of the late 90s, as was the opposing manager this evening, as Makausha remains on the deck, play has resumed. Lampard with a very heavy touch. He's also taken a tumble. Coucher finally back up on his feet. The winning coach is definitely engraved in South Melbourne. They were NSL champions on four occasions. More recently, they were NPL winners in 2016. Of course, Premiers in 2022 under Esteban. So, definitely a side on the up to keep up with their winning mentality. 
second tier of Australian football. Not to set the cat among the pigeons too much here, but I think what would so what would someone doing so much in this kind of jokes about Postacoglu? What would he? I wonder what he would think about a reactive sort of style. I, I wonder. I think there's there's more than one way to play the game. I, I, I know that for sure. A lot of people, and it's, I think that's only fair too. But some it can be a tough watch. It can be a grind sometimes. South Melbourne. It can be just a lot of. It can be quite turgid, particularly some of the early season games. It looks when they're finding their feet a little bit. Bernardi hit now at the top of the box. But uh, Driscoll there to clear. Really opens up for Bernardi there to grab his second. Man's alive. Nicola Brennan sitting down his marker. Really bounce towards his region. Very depths of the penalty area. As well see, you see that there, kind of kick. Ten minutes of a little time remain. Additional time to follow. I feel like there will be much of it. Of course, interruptions coming from the substitutes and any discrepancies. Esteban Quintas, who's had a fair bit to say, he's a lot happier now. He's quite on the uh, touchline. As Joush, 30 on the edge of the area, towards the back post it goes, headed across the face of goal. In a consolation for old Toner as the Irishman, Stephen Lawless. Not able to find the back of the net, has found a corner. A couple of substitutions ready for. South Melbourne in Mikhailo Marinkovic, uh, Marinkovic as well as Zach Spitziri. So they might have to wait while this corner's taken will come in. Brandon applying some pressure. Substitute getting amongst it. It's done well. Dispatched a shot towards goal. Javi Lopez was never bothered by that. He's been holding the entire time as we can see. A little bit uh, in discomfort. He does remain on the deck, and now the official attending to him. Of course, he was a late introduction, or inclusion rather, to this contest. Was Tong uncertain what the damage might be? Looks like he's pushing towards left ankle. This will be very unfortunate for the substitute. Just gingerly to get back up on his feet. Seems to be okay for now. Fingers crossed it didn't look, it's not as bad as what it initially looked like. Might be okay just to run it out. I hope so, because he's just brought on into a playmaker area, which is more advanced than what he usually plays in number two. The substitution has been issued for South. Fans to our left applauded the efforts of Nicola. And impressive night tonight, Max. Takes refuge on the bench. Scored the opener. Absolute fast start for South Melbourne. It was generated by Nicola with that class he so often brings. A well deserved early, mar early marker for him. And it looks like it'll be Mario Barcia, I think, to take an early. An early exit as well. He'll be replaced by Zach Spatiri. A professional as ever as well, Barcia. In terms of his interceptions, in terms of his tackling strong in the contest, repeat interceptions that were that were quite crucial in the end. So he made he of course making the switch from uh, Benny Greens in the off season to South. He spotted in seamlessly, you have to say. It's such a drive about the way he goes about it. Head down, relentless pressure. It's a Falcon. He's going to open up for South. Back in possession, Archibald. He has bagged one tonight. Deep ball. Smiteri, his first touch. Cross exactly into the path of other well, three substitutes. Another one intervening there. Some of the form of. Marankovic. Yeah, to be certain. Still here. Esteban on the touchline, ensuring these boys press. Nice it up. That part that it roll. As we're 20 seconds away from knowing the damage of stoppage time. 
I think it might be a couple of minutes added on. Get confirmation shortly from Ugo Raslan. Well, there's a busy fourth official. Rankovic goes up and high. Heading towards the heavens. So finally settles. Archibald. Pressing relentlessly still. Tonga amongst it. Rankovic also. It's lofted forward. Trying to get onto it and will get onto it. South, they continue to build. Archibald, Spiteri, Lampard. That's a concede possession. It's all the way back to Yankovic. As two minutes have been issued, we are in stoppage time now. Another victory for South who continue their unbeaten run this season. What's it mean for next week? Uh, of course, I believe the league action that takes a break for the Australia Cup. Uh, of course, initial stages. So, a break of league action, but it's Tong to brace the turn over here. Does well, but he can't quite get the shot away. Found himself in space there. Sorry to put you on the spot there, Katie. It all opened up. Tong had a gleaming chance that you thought he would take first time. And that will be all she wrote. South Melbourne continue their rampant start to the MPL Victoria season with a comprehensive 4-1 victory here at Paisley Park. From the output, from the initial moment the ball was kicked, Remained very strong. Grabbed the early goal through Max McCola. Advantage doubled in the same manner at the start of the second half. And they stormed home to a 4 1 victory. Quality. Quality wins out at the end of the day, and that's exactly what South found. Um, Sawyer, Mikola. Archibald and Bonada, the goal scorers, leading the damage, cancelling out that second half strike from Bourjouash, who briefly brought Altona back into the contest, who pulled the goal back, but South, oh, oh so telling in the way that they managed the game, oh so telling by the gear that they found to try and see off the Altona challenge. Altona were brave, Altona were brave, but they need to, again, I think the quality was lacking, and we saw the difference that golf in class, I think, ended up showing at the end of the day. And I may have gone a week early on the Australia Cup fixtures, but excuse my apologies all. Um, the league continues on, of course, next week in the, in the run-in to Easter. Oakley, Cannons and South Melbourne, Friday night, 8.30pm. Jack Edwards is a good googly moogly, that's a game and a half. A classic rivals, top of the table clash, Oakley, of course, coming off that 4-1 win over Green Gully last night. And Altona Magic, tricky, tricky contest away heading over to Port Melbourne on Saturday night as well at JL Murphy or SS Anderson Reserve, excuse me. So, league action continues. I think South, what we've learned tonight is that they're still a contender. They will still continue to hold sway at the top of the table. They will maintain first place. And Altona can't quite break free of that relegation threat. So, still lots to play and it was great to from bringing it with you down this evening, Adam. Likewise, the pleasure was all mine as we look to see you Next time, Home of NPL on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.